In October 2008, I traveled out to 29 Palms, California for the Defense Department's wearable power pack competition. I had been tracking several teams in the lead up to the event, blogging and podcasting about their progress as the event approached. I was very excited to see how their power solutions would perform. This is Dr. William Reese. He's the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Laboratories and Basic Sciences and a driving force behind the competition. Palms. We're going to look at the components in the systems. Across the entire Department of Defense enterprise, we have many different entities. We have different units that need different power demands. We're going to look at the components of the systems that competed here at 29 Palms, and there will be individual follow-ups, not just with the systems that folks had here, but also with different components that were in it. Beyond that, we are really... Forty teams attempted to survive a 92-hour static bench load test and a four-hour field test. First prize, a million dollars, would be awarded to the power pack that could generate 20 watts average power continuously for 96 hours and weigh under four kilos. Competitor Steve Middleton had a great solution that relied on electrostatics, but he didn't make the final cut. Neither did Jennifer of Ultracell, who let me follow her through the final course. Um, this is our fuel uh, bladder or uh, bag, and it's uh, threaded into the Molly vest through the strap. Ultracell's here. XX25 um, fuel cell was a fan down, favorite, see, uh, but it didn't take the prize. Test, um. The final field test involved putting each power pack through activities that required different power draws. At each station, the power levels were monitored by the officials. Can you tell me what this is, uh, tell me more about the Land Warrior system, what it's powering? The Defense Department was looking for a power pack that could inflate a boat, for instance, or maintain an even power distribution. The power pack should withstand the stress of being jostled around during long walks. This soldier must have traveled about 50 miles in place. It should also be able to purify water and operate when a soldier was prone. Even the big guys were there. Lionel Liebman, a business development manager with Lockheed Martin, led his team in a demonstration of their fuel cell solution, but they had problems with thermal management that prevented them from being in the finals. The independent inventors were here too. Remember Steve Middleton? He traveled solo from Utah to demo his power pack. And the winners? Well, here's one of them, adaptive materials. They took second place. First place DuPont and Smart Fuel Cell won the grand prize, and third place went to the Jenny Fuel Cell, also a Smart Fuel Cell invention. This is Bettina Siobhan for Aviation Week.